today we are in York, England, the most medieval city in the world. The city is filled with history around every corner and really makes you feel like you are in the heart of a medieval town. Historic castles, foreboding sitting walls, narrow cobblestone paths, fascinating ruins, grand churches, and more await you in this enchanting North England city. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Project Gaia. Today we are here in York, England. Now, York, England is one of the best preserved medieval cities in the world. So you're gonna see a lot of medieval architecture, very small kind of meandering lanes going through some really old streets and blocks through here. And you're gonna see some fascinating churches, castles, streets, walls. It really is a very cool place to see. So what we're going to do on this tour is we're going to show you the best things to do and see while you're here in New York. So let's begin. York is surrounded by walls and there are several city gates like this one that permitted people inside and out of the city. It was a form of protection in ancient and medieval times, and today you still ceremoniously walk through these gates when entering the old city center. York's story stretches back over two millennia and was founded by the Romans in 71 AD. It was known as Eboracum and served as the capital of the Roman province of Britain Inferior. The city played a crucial role in shaping England's destiny during the medieval period as it became a key Viking settlement known as Jorvik in the 9th century and most of the narrow streets are built on top of these ancient and medieval civilizations. York's history is a tapestry of Roman, Viking, medieval, and modern English influence making it a captivating destination for history lovers. Walking through York is quite literally walking back in time and will leave you feeling in complete awe. So one thing you for sure have to check out when you're here in York is York Castle. So that's obviously behind me. York Castle is almost 1,000 years old. So this tower was constructed in 1069. And you go inside and you see a fabulously preserved mid early medieval castle, right? So it's very interesting. It has those big, thick stone walls. Um, it has a bunch of cool little rooms in it. And you can head to the top and get amazing views of York. So let's head in. Clifford's Tower was originally built by William the Conqueror as part of York Castle in the 11th century. As you walk through the castle, notice the thick, impenetrable stone walls and centuries-old spiral staircases. Clifford's Tower has a long history, but the most infamous event that took place here was a mass suicide in 1190 when the Jewish community sought refuge inside the tower during anti-Semitic riots and ultimately set themselves on fire. Okay, are you ready to see the coolest bathroom ever? Let's head into this. From the top of the tower you get fantastic panoramic views of York and the surrounding countryside, so make sure you make the climb to the top.
So the city of York has an over 2,000 year old history. So you're gonna see that as you go around, right? So most of it is medieval, right? What you can visually see. But if you look at the walls around the city, you're gonna be able to see that. For example, right here, right? So this here is part of the Roman walls. And you can see the difference in the bricks. And then above here is the medieval walls. So when you're going around the city, take a look at that because it really helps you see the difference in times. Now, one place I recommend you have lunch between all of your sightseeing is the York waterfront. And that's where we are now. So you walk along here, it's all cobblestone streets along the river, and there's tons of pubs and there's a lot of outdoor seating. So definitely if it's a nice day, check this out. The York waterfront along the River Ouse is a picturesque and vibrant area that adds to the city's charm. This waterfront has played a pivotal role in the city's history, serving as a vital trade route during the medieval period. Today it is more used as a drinking, eating, and recreation spot. Make sure you take a leisurely stroll along the promenade and take a boat tour if you have the time. The York waterfront is a place where history meets contemporary life, making it a must-see for visitors. If you want to take a break on your adventure, stop into St. Mary's Church. The origins of the church can be traced back to the 11th century, and its impressive stained glass windows, intricate stonework, and serene interior provide a tranquil retreat from the hustle and bustle of York's medieval streets. We are now at arguably the most interesting site in York. We are at the Shambles. Now the Shambles is the arguably best preserved medieval street in the world. So what it is basically is a commercial corridor that goes right through the center of York and it's just filled with all these really cool medieval stores, right? So um, if you're into Harry Potter, uh, Harry Potter's Diagon Alley was modeled after this so it looks just like Diagon Alley it's really cool to see. The Shambles is a truly enchanting medieval street that will quite literally transport you back in time. Its name is derived from the old English word shamel referring to the benches or stalls where butchers would display their meats. Make sure you stop into the shop that must not be named to harness your inner child and quite literally provide you with the Diagon Alley experience you've always wanted. Inside you will find tons of interesting and unique Harry Potter merchandise as well as house specific options. I got this Slytherin alumni hat. As you continue to explore the store, you can buy a wand specific to your personality like an Ollivander's and pick up a chocolate frog along with a famous witch and wizards card. This place is a Harry Potter fan's heaven on earth. The Shambles narrow and cobblestone streets are flanked by leaning timber frame structures seemingly pushing towards each other creating a canyon in the street below. This creates a picturesque and almost fairy tale like ambiance. The biggest craze in the shambles these days is York Ghost Merchants. This store always has a line that is at least an hour long and inside you can buy an ornamental ghost specifically made in York to fit your unique style and personality. The shambles could get quite busy and all the shops open around 10 a.m. If you want the shambles completely to yourself, I'd recommend getting here before everything opens around 9 a.m. Right off of Little Shambles, there is a courtyard that serves as a sort of city market. Here you can find everything from various merchandise, fruits and vegetables, meats, souvenirs, food carts, and more. This is the perfect place to stop and eat or to take a rest from the hustle and bustle of the main corridor.
If you want to try some of the best scones in the world, I recommend you check out Parlor Made, located right on the shambles. Have your morning coffee and scone from the 600-year-old attic as you peer down at the medieval shopping street below. Next, check out the Society of Chemists. This sorcery-themed soap and fragrance store really is unique. It has a dark and edgy vibe playing deep underground house music and has some interestingly named soaps, perfumes, candles, and colognes like Dragon's Breath. Viking lovers are going to love the Jorvik Viking Center. This museum teaches you all about York's Viking era history. The museum is actually built on top of the remains of a Viking archaeological site and you can see the ruins in the basement. You begin the experience on a sort of amusement park ride where you glide through a recreated animatronic Viking village. The next part of the museum exhibits artifacts and remains found nearby from Jorvik or York's Viking era past. Now a must see in York is the York City Walls, which are behind me. You can see down there, it goes for miles, right? So these are 2,000 year old walls, right? So they started in the Roman era and they were expanded in the medieval era. And basically what they do is they circumnavigate York. So you go, it's about two miles to go all the way around them, but there's a couple access gates. So you walk up to it and it affords you beautiful views of York. And it really is amazing because you're kind of walking on the old city walls and you can really experience what medieval people experienced when they were guarding the city. So let's head in. The York City Walls, often considered some of the finest medieval walls in England, encircle the historic center of York stretching for over two miles. They were originally built by the Romans in the third century AD and some of the Roman remains are still visible. Whether you're a history buff or simply seeking panoramic views, a walk on the walls provides a memorable experience and a sense of connection to the past. One thing to note about the York City walls, it is, is, it is not ADA accessible, right? So wheelchairs are a no-go up here. Strollers are a no-go as well. Now I have something called the yo-yo stroller, which is actually very popular in European countries. And it folds up and it works great along cobblestone streets. So what I did is I just folded mine up and uh, my daughter just walked along with me. So if you want to see the walls, you can't bring a stroller unless you have this one. Um, I highly recommend the stroller. I have the link. Uh, below the description. So check that out if you're interested. Monk Bar is one of several city gate entrances used to enter and exit the city in medieval and Roman times. Each one of these gates have a fascinating history and can be used to access the York City walls. My favorite part of York is the enchanted energy of the city. Not many places in the world offer such an uninterrupted city center with original architecture and a lack of big box retail and restaurants. Walking around here is like walking in a storybook world, one that brings out the kid in you and makes you feel happy and warm. History is around every corner and you can't help but gawk at the city's beauty. Stonegate is another area that you should check out. This retail area is filled with unique stores and pubs all within a medieval setting. This is basically a less touristy and less crowded version of the shambles.
So after seeing all of these historic buildings, you're probably interested in seeing what the inside of a medieval building looks like. Well, that's where you come here for. This is called Barley Hall, and it's behind me. So this is a home from the 1300s that was recently found and restored. And you go in and you learn all about life in the Middle Ages and what it was like to live in York during medieval times. This beautifully restored townhouse offers visitors a captivating glimpse into the life and times of 15th century England. Originally built for a wealthy merchant, the hall showcases exquisite timber-framed architecture, authentic period furniture, and recreated interiors. The museum is also good for kids as there are a variety of things they can play with to learn more about the history in a fun way. Barley Hall allows you to step into a medieval household and helps you to get better acquainted with and better understand York's rich medieval heritage. Now a must see when you're here in York is York Minster, which is behind me. Now this is the main cathedral in York, and this is something that you must see in life. It really is something that you should have on your bucket list because this is one of the greatest world cathedrals, right? So inside it is fantastically beautiful. It has one of the best collections of stained glass windows on earth, and it really is a breathtaking experience. So you definitely have to check this out. So. Let's head in. York Minster is one of the world's great cathedrals and serves as an amazing masterpiece of Gothic architecture. The magnificent cathedral has a history dating back over 1,000 years. Construction began in the 13th century and continued for several centuries, resulting in a masterpiece of unparalleled grandeur. Minster's stunning stained glass windows, including the famous Great East Window, are awe-inspiring. The intricate stone carvings throughout the cathedral are equally impressive and create a sense of sacred grandeur. York Minster remains the vital center of worship, offering daily religious services. Make sure you travel beneath the minster into the crypt where you will find the tomb of St. William, the patron saint of York. now is St. Mary's Abbey. Now this is a Benedictine monastery from the 11th century, right? So this is almost a thousand years old, right? It has a fascinating history and what I find so great about it is it's like this ruin but it's a park in the middle of York and there's amazing gardens around it and it's just something beautiful to see and really get up and close and personal with it and I mean look at this fine stonework I and mean, you just don't see things like this anymore, right? And you know, there's kids playing on it and there's a garden around. It's definitely something to see when you're here in York. St. Mary's Abbey was founded in the 11th century and was one of the most powerful and influential abbeys in Northern England. After the English Reformation, the abbey was dismantled and has been a romantic ruin for centuries. Its striking ruins now stand as a reminder of the abbey's historical and religious importance to the city of York. Okay, everyone, that concludes our big tour of York, England. Now, York is one of my most favorite places in the world because of its famous medieval history and architecture. I mean, it really is an interesting place to see. Guys, if you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, like this video, share this video with your family and friends, and uh, feel free to leave me a comment below. Uh, ask me any questions you may have. I get back to all my comments very quickly. Um, or leave me your suggestions. 
Okay, until next time, guys. Take care. Bye.